Okay, so I'm hiding out in my bathroom with limited space, and the only place I can put my camera is right next to a sink. So this should be interesting, but I think we've got it. All right, so you discover some matter and you place it in a container. It seems to fill the container and takes the shape of it. In other words, if it fills the container, chances are it's got variable volume. And it takes the shape of it, telling you it has variable shape. The thing we know that has variable volume and variable shape is a guess. Question two, which of the following is a molecule but not a compound? So the definition of a molecule is two or more atoms, chemically combined. Um, a compound, in a compound, those are two or more different atoms. So we're looking for something that has two or more atoms, but the atoms can't be different. In that case, the only thing on this list is selenium. This has different atoms. Um, this is just a single atom. It's not a molecule. Here's a molecule, but it's got carbon and oxygen. And that is why that is your answer. Number three, it asks you to put this number in scientific notation with two sig figs. So one of the things I really like to do is just take that number and immediately put it in scientific notation and then figure out the sig figs. So if I did that, I'd put the decimal right here and move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So I'd have 1.98461. One nine nine, and again I moved it seven times, so times ten to the seven. Now to put it in scientific notation, you underline the first two, or excuse me, to put it in scientific notation with appropriate sig figs, you underline the first two. Ask if the number next to it's five or greater. It is, so you round up. Um, do you just give up because this is greater than five and just put one point nine? Um, hopefully not. Hopefully you realize, hey, nineteen point eight would round to twenty, right? And that's why we get an answer of two point zero e seven. Next question is how many sig figs are in the measurement? Um, 0 0.430. This is essentially just testing your knowledge of sig figs here. Um, so zeros before numbers never count, and here we got one, two, three. Another quick way to do it is just put this number in scientific notation, which would be 4.30 times 10 to the negative two. And this has one, two, three numbers in it. So another way to do it. Um, remember zeros after the decimal as long as there is a decimal or after the number as long as there's a decimal included are significant. All right, number five, you add 42.9 milliliters of soda. To a large container containing 104.1. And it asks you what's the volume in your container now. So when you add, you're going to want to be sure to look at precision. Um, if we do this the traditional way, this would give us a zero, we carry the one, then we got seven here, 0 0.741. So I got 147.0. Um, again, you're looking at precision here. So we know this to the tenths place, we know this to the tenths place, and therefore that answer, turn all the light here, therefore that answer we should also know to the tenths place. When we put this number in scientific notation, we get that. 1.470 times 10 to the 2. All right, number 6. So answer the following with appropriate sig figs. So um, here it looks like we've got some addition and subtraction and some multiplication and division. You need to know that those two things have different rules. So we're going to first add the 249.362. So you'd follow just regular PEMDAS rules. To that, we will add 1 and you get an answer of 250.362. But we should pay attention to the fact that we actually knew this to the, this one we knew all the way to the uh, tens, hundreds, thousands place, but this one we only knew to the ones place. So technically we only know this answer to the ones place, telling us we know this one, this one, and this one, it's got three sig figs. Now, when we go ahead and divide this by 63.498, We've got something with three sig figs, even though we use those extra numbers, dividing it by something with uh, five sig figs will give us an answer with three sig figs, and that's why um, 3.94 is our answer. Uh, question seven. Which of the following is the smallest number? So we're just looking at magnitude here. 
10 to the 6, 10 to the 4, 10 to the negative 4, 10 to the negative 8, something to the negative 8. That's going to be your moving the decimal place in this direction eight times. It's going to be 0 0.0000098. There should be seven zeros before the 9 and the 8. All right, this question, um, some people were still getting it wrong. I think I went over it in the lecture pretty efficiently, pretty effectively. So uh, if you didn't get it, then pay attention now because this is something that will show up on the final exam most likely. All right, which of the following has two sig figs? Let's go through each of them. First of all, for it to have sig figs, it's gotta be a measurement, right? Or maybe even a conversion between systems, which is also a measurement. Um, but it, we have uh, something called exact numbers, which has an infinite number of sig figs. And those show up when you're counting and also exact conversion. So the conversions between systems such as um, 12 inches equals one foot. All right, so here we have 30 feet. That is a measurement. That has one sig fig. 440 grapes. Ah, uh, we're counting grapes. You don't measure grapes. For example, you don't measure things in grapes. You're not like, hey, I am 843 grapes tall. That's just weird. This has infinite number of sig figs. Uh, 110 atoms, exactly the same situation, an infinite number of sig figs. And here we have 4.0 times 10 to the 2 seconds, this is measurement time, is measured. And this has 1, 2 sig figs, and that is why it is your answer. All right, question number nine. You are a golden doodle fanatic. You love golden doodles, which is funny. I have one, and I don't love golden doodles, but he's growing on me. Okay, so you even have a golden doodle named after you. Its name is, oh, for gold, um, if you didn't get that one. Okay, all the stuff above was pointless. That was annoying. But let's say you weigh the golden doodle that is named after you. Okay, it weighs 101 pounds. Which of these best describes the golden weight? Okay, so this is 101 pounds is a measurement. So this thing has three sig figs. Remember, you look at the last one, the last significant digit, and you add one and subtract one from that place. This is in the ones place, so we're going to add one and subtract one. 100 to 102 is the actual weight of that golden doodle. It's somewhere between there, and that's why that is your answer. All right, doodles are great dogs. Who is obsessed with golden doodles here? Okay, doodle is a new unit I made up to assess the dogness of a dog. Sometimes I write these really early in the morning. How many nano doodles are in 8.5 kilo doodles? All right, so we're going from, looks like we're gonna go from kilo to nano, um, and it's just uh, using SI prefixes. We have 8.5 kilo doodles. I'm just gonna do dude. And we wanna turn that into nano doodles. Some things to know that kilo, equals 10 to the third, and nano equals 10 to the negative nine. So right now we have 8.5 kilodoodles. Um, usually I like to start off right away. Instead of the kilo, I like to replace it with times 10 to the third, which is his multiplier. So we got 8.5 times 10 to the third doodles. If this is doodles, we match it down here. And we're interested in turning it into nano doodles. How many nano doodles, or how many doodles are in a nano doodle? There are 10 to the negative nine. This gives us 8.5 times 10 to the three divided by 10 to the negative nine, which is 8.5 times 10 to the three minus the negative nine, which would be the same thing as adding a nine, which would give you 8.5 times 10 to the 12 nano doodles. All right, question 11, a rocket accelerates at 92 feet per second squared. That means every second it's gaining 92 feet per second in terms of velocity. And you want to turn this into inches per hour squared. So the first things first, let's go ahead and turn um, feet into inches. So we know that in a foot there are 12 inches. And this brought us into inches now. Looks like I started to make it more complex than I, I made it easier on y'all. 
All right, and then, wait a second. That's metered, huh? Okay, so change my mind. Who's doing this? I'll go over here. We got 92 feet per second squared, and sorry, I wrote on that so I couldn't see that this is actually meters per hour squared. So our feet, we have to turn into meters, and that is why I gave you this. They're 3.28 feet in a meter, 3.28084 feet in a meter, and now our feet will cancel. Now we're in meters per second squared, and now we can take the second squared and turn it into hour squared. I like to go backwards um, because I like to see the diagonals crossing. Um, if this is seconds, we have to put seconds here. There's 60 seconds in an hour. Just kidding, in a minute. And there's 60 minutes in an hour. I can do it. Then we're gonna square these guys and square these guys because this one was squared. Second squared are canceling, minute squared are canceling. And now we've got 60 squared times 60 squared times 92 divided by 3.28084. Let's do it. And I get this really big number, which is 3.6 times 10 to the 8. Number 12, you attend a turtle race and you bring a stopwatch. Your friends bring stopwatches too. In the end, you all show the time it took your turtle across the finish line. This is pretty much exactly like the practice problem or practice exam. It says you had a time of 121.3. Friend number one was 121.2. Friend number two was 121.4. So you guys were all kind of around the same um, time. You're just off by a little bit. So then you watch it and you find out, hey, you were right, good job you, 121.3. What can be said of you and your friends' uh, stopwatch measurements? So you and your friends, it would appear, all had very similar things. That means they were precise. But also, if you average them out, they all average out to the exact same actual time, so they were also accurate. Go you and your friends. They're both accurate and precise. Okay. Question 13. You have a barrel containing 15 gallons of water. So that sounds like a measurement to me. If you remove 0.4 gallons, what's left in the barrel? Well, if you take 15 and you subtract 0.4, you get 14.6. But this 15 wasn't really 15. It was somewhere between 14 and 16. You have no idea where because it only had two sig figs. So when you subtract, you look at the precision. This one you knew to the ones place. This one you knew to the tenths place. Which one do you know the least about? That'd be the ones place. So you really only know it to the ones place. You ask yourself if this number's five or greater. It is, so you round up. And you got 15 gallons. All right, question 14. Answer in scientific notation with the appropriate significant figures. Um, my assumption <clears throat> is that the math on this is right, so I'm not even going to do it. This has three. This has two. My final answer needs two. Number 15. How many yards cubed are in 4.3 inches cubed? So let's go ahead and do it. So we got 4.3 inches cubed. Note it's not 4.3 cubed inches cubed. It's just inches cubed. We know that there are 12 inches in a foot. And we're going to yard count, so we know that there are three feet in a yard according to the information given. If this is cubed, we must cube the unit and cube the number and cube everything in that column. Same thing, cube the unit, cube the number and everything in that column. So now we've got 4.3 divided by 12 cubed times 3 cubed. And now our resulting units will be yard cubed. Let's go ahead and do it. And 
and I get an answer of 9.2 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, question 16. Although not a common unit, how many millimole cubed are in 5.3 megamole cubed? That unit actually doesn't exist at all, but I need something that you guys couldn't just Google um, should you decide to do something so immoral um, and not fail with pride. Remember, fail with pride, it's so much better. Okay, so we've got 5.3 megamole cubed. I told you to originally place that mega with times 10 to the sixth, that would be mega. And milli is 10 to the negative three. So what we're gonna do is say 5.3 times 10 to the six, but it's cubed, so we gotta cube it. Mole, cubed. If this is mole cubed, we have to put mole cubed here. And we're interested in turning it into millimole. Well, there are 10 to the negative three cubed, mole cubed, and a millimole cubed. So if we break this down, we got 5.3 times 10 to the 6 times 3 would be 18, divided by 3 times negative 3 would be negative 9, which would be 5.3 times 10 to the 18 minus a negative 9. Subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding, and you get 5.3 times 10 to the 27. Number 17, answer the following with appropriate sig fig. So we got 0 0.000418. I'm gonna take it out of scientific notation to add it. And 0 0.0130 here. And we're simply adding it. Get eight, one, four, three, one, zero, zero point. Kind of going backwards. And then we're gonna look at a precision. You knew this one all the way down here. You knew this one only to about the fourth place. Therefore, your answer, you only know to the fourth place. This is your answer, um, 0 0.0134. Number 18, you find a, metal, a random metal toy and you wanna to know its density. You place it in water and watch as the volume is displaced. So we kind of talked about this in, in lecture. You place a toy in some water, the volume goes up. In this case, it went up by a difference of 4.0 milliliters from 20.8 to 24.8. And, and we know that the mass is 16.16 grams. We already know the equation because it says grams per milliliter. That means grams divided by milliliter. You take the grams, you divide it by the milliliter. Grams divided by milliliter will give you 4.0. All right, question number 19. Which state of matter is fixed in both shape and volume? That would be a solid. And number 20, you worked hard enough. I only accepted the A's, just kidding. We accepted every single one of these and you got it right if you guessed. Um, I saw, or rather, I got lots of emails with people saying, I'm pretty sure I got an A, but it says I got a C or a D or an F or whatever the case is. Um, hopefully now you understand where you might've gone wrong. Uh, note that this was not meant to be a lecture. This is meant to go over stuff. So if you didn't understand what I did, uh, chances are it's the second or third or even fourth time I've gone over it. So make sure you go back through lectures to understand um, go back through the book, look at the explanation or the example problems, and hopefully you'll figure it out. Um, if not, I'm always here. Have a good one.